All right, with all this COVID stuff, I've been working at home and uh, seems like grocery stores are running out of stock on stuff. So I decided to get ahead of the game this one time. And uh, I'm gonna break down a chuck roll I found at a decent price. Uh, it's USDA Choice. It's 25 pounds, 24.78. And uh, it was only $3.09 for uh, this hunk of meat. I went to Costco, uh, USDA Select was a uh, $2.99, so this was only $0.10 cents more, and I got USDA Choice. So today I'm going to break down uh, a chuck roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take it out of the bag, drain it and uh, see if I need to rinse off the uh, juices. All right, here's the beef chuck roll out of the bag. In the uh, cryovac bag, that's called wet aging, um, instead of dry aging where they just hang the beef. So what we have here is uh, off the chuck, which is the front, sort of the shoulder of the uh, cow. You could see where the ribs have been and it's peeled off, so this is where it's cut this way would be the ribeye steaks and this is towards the neck and right here this part right here is where it was on the uh, shoulder blades on the inside so typically in a supermarket they'll take a chuck roll and cut it straight down and you get chuck roast and i've done uh, recipes with chuck roast but what i'm going to do is separate this part called the eye from the lower part, the underblade. And that way I could kind of uh, do multiple things with it. Supposedly this end is where, going this way is where ribeye steaks are made. And this, there's still some of that muscle here so I could cut tender muscles similar to the ribeye. So, my objective is to pull, since all these muscles have uh, are separated by seams, I'll just separate them out at seams. S-E-A-M. So I'll just use a knife and start cutting. Right, so I've taken out the, uh, what's called the chuck eye from what's called the underblade. Okay, now I'm going to work with the uh, chuck eye first since it's a smaller manageable cut. Okay, with the uh, chuck eye, I'm gonna just clean off this silver skin and any extra fat. So that's the next task. Throw that in my little reject bowl. I should note that uh, where this tapers is roughly you have the equivalent of a ribeye in the chuck section. I'm trying to remove uh, any silver skin membranes that uh, well, if that are tough.
Like here's a silver skin that I need to remove. I try to just go underneath and just slice it off. You can tell this is part of a tendon right here. Okay, this is the uh, check eye. This is the part that's attached to the, towards the rib eye. So roughly about this much is sort of uh, left over. I'm gonna tie it down and uh, cut them into little stakes. And the string is just to help uh, guide me. I should have squared it off. shooting for roughly one inch sizes. So these are supposed to be the uh, ribeye wannabes or check eye stakes. And as you go more towards the neck, it gets uh, tougher. So what you could do with this piece is just make time into a, like a roast. But I think I'll still do a few more stakes and then do roast with the rest. So as you go further, as I said, some people like taking, as you come up here, cutting this in half, and then you have sort of a stuff you could braise, sort of like short ribs. And uh, for me, fat is flavor. So I'm doing a bunch of different options.
Also, if I'm going to freeze this, I like to leave it whole because once you cut it up, you get more air into it and it kind of uh, messes things up. So this could be a roast cut in half or cut it this way and you have a smaller roast or just tie it up or roast a big hunk of meat like this. So this is the chuck eye. Next, I'll move on to the uh, underblade, the flat part. Right, this is what is called the underblade. You have the check eye on top. This is the underblade. You could tell where the ribs used to be. For uh, chuck ribs and uh, again here's st st uh, gristle silver skin that will just clean off and uh, get down to the meat of it Here's another muscle that's unique. I don't. I cut off part of it. You can see the grain is running this way, while some of this grain is running here. So this, from what I gathered, is equivalent to another. Could be like treated like a flank steak. So just again, this uh, these muscles are have their own seams or. Uh, connection so you could peel that out and try to do something unique with it this is the piece I just cut out it has a large grain some people say it's like a flank steak and can be grilled. So I think I'll uh, trim this up and make uh, fajitas and see if it compares. Trimming off the sort of the silver skin. Uh, I hacked away at this uh, piece and I'm leaving some of the fat on. It looks like it's not going to be that tough, but uh, I'll treat this as a flank steak and marinade. Okay, back to the underbelly. I'm going to try to trim off all this uh, silver skin and excess fat and get to the underlying um, muscle. Definitely trim that off. One thing I'm learning is I need to really get new knives. These are not sharp enough and I've tried sharpening them. All right, this is a uh, part of the underblade. Supposedly this is either the fourth or seventh most tender part of uh, a cattle or beef. 
So the grain structure is kind of fanning out. And what uh, people I've seen do is just cut. They've cut stakes this way, but then you could cut against the grain and get stakes that way too. I'll just make it a smaller section so it's easier for me to manage. So there's a lot of marbling. Let me square that off. I'll probably make kebabs out of it. So for the smaller pieces, I'll probably do them skewers. Because of the, all the marbling, it's supposed to be uh, very tender. I'll give it a shot later. All right, I'm finally done breaking down the uh, chuck roll. So what I have here is the uh, chuck roast. And I had to split it so I could weigh it. It maxed out my little scale. And uh, this is a two and a half pound roast and a three and a quarter pound roast right here. These are my uh, sort of a uh, chuck eye rib eyes or chuck eyes that are close to the rib eye. And these are my chuck eye steaks that I made. So the total weight of this is uh, nine and a quarter pounds. And over here we have the underblade. And uh, these are some of the underblade steaks that have a lot of nice marbling. Here's the uh, flank steak, uh, sort of a flank steak in the chuck underblade. A couple more lean muscles and uh, some kebab meat. And that is eight and a quarter pounds. So, so far there's uh, 17 and a half pounds of meat right there. This is what I call my ground beef pile. It's basically uh, meat and fat that looks like you could grind it up and make a good ground beef and that's uh, about four pounds and it's roughly looks like a 80, 75, 25 blend. Uh, this is my what I call the bro broth pile. It's basically uh, beef with a lot of tough sinews and Things that look like it won't break down in a ground beef mixture and you don't want gristle so I could uh, just throw this into a like the instant pot and make broth out of it and just discard it uh, just try to pull out the nutrients and that is uh, one and three quarters pound and that last pile right there is just the fat pile mainly fat with little very little meat on it and that's one and a half pounds. So total weight is uh, 24.75, which is pretty close to what I bought. And uh, in some respects, I think I'm able to find a use for everything. This fat can be thrown into this and I could throw in the leaner parts here and make a uh, ground beef that way and try to maintain the 80-20 uh, 75 25 uh, ground beef mixture. All right, the way I'm going to store the meat, or at least uh, use the meat, is uh, I try to use the finely ground or cut up stuff first. For the under blades, I should have uh, left them whole, but I was so excited about cutting them down that I went ahead and cut them down. So I'll probably use this to make chili and do that first, but but for uh, the roast, the big hunks of meat, if I put them in the freezer, I wrap them in saran wrap first or some type of cling film. We want to minimize the contact with air. Then I wrap that with foil and just make sure I wrap it as tight as possible. And also uh, use a uh, easy to remove tape and write what it is because in the freezer things look 
like a block of whatever it is uh, looks like everything else and then I use a freezer bag which are uh, heavier gauge than uh, regular storage bags and also write down the uh, what it is and the date so you know uh, when it was packaged and what you could what it is so I'll put that in the zip freezer bag and that goes in the I'll put that in the freezer and then also try to this is like a three layers of protection and also try to minimize the air in that and the idea with stakes is probably you want to put a layer of cling film in between each stake so they're easier to remove and also when you package them make them in usable sizes you don't want to put 10 pounds into one um, storage bag and then only need to use one or two stakes at a time all right here's what i have uh, wrapped up in the freezer uh, some underblade stakes this label's wrong uh, also i've ended up putting quantity or weight so three and a quarter pounds two and a half pounds and uh, stuff that i think i could eat like today and other things i just put in a ziploc also, uh, if I plan to make chili or a cook dish, I could freeze that uh, later after it's cooked. So I don't have to freeze fresh meat. I could just freeze uh, cooked results, cooked product. All right, I'm going to try these uh, steaks. This is the uh, chuck eye closer to the rib eye, and these are the underblade steaks with the nice marbling. And I just added some uh, avocado oil and some clarified butter. I'm going to let that come up to temperature and sear these steaks off and then finish them with a little butter. All right, here are the uh, finished steaks. I just uh, took them off the frying pan, put some butter, salt and pepper on top, and I'll let it rest. Uh, the thinner steaks I cooked total four minutes, one minute on each side. This one I cooked a total of uh, six minutes, three minutes or one flipping every one minute. All right, here are the uh, rested steaks. Looks like a good, uh, got decent browning. This is the uh, chuck eye steak, and these are the two underblade steaks. And we'll see how they taste. I'll start with uh, the chuck eye steak. See how it looks. This was done uh, two minutes on each side for four minutes. Looks like a good medium. Nice and tender, has a good beefy flavor. Let's do this one. This cuts really nice. Again, this is a medium also. Give it a shot. Wow, that's also very good. One thing about this uh, track eye steak, it has a bunch of different uh, muscles, so I'll try each of them. Also a good medium. 
has a nice char on top. It's very tender. Very good flavor on the uh, truck eye steak. Let me try the larger uh, undercut or underblade. Underblade is uh, definitely the chuck eye, especially towards the ribeye end, is a lot more tender. This is tender also. Has good flavor. Good flavor. easy to chew. This is definitely a lot more tender, the uh, the uh, chuck eye towards the ribeye end is definitely more tender. This is uh, not bad. This is good too. It's definitely an easy eat. So if you want uh, medium rare, maybe a minute and a half per side, three minutes total, is a good call. All right. Salt and pepper and uh, finish with butter. Fried in uh, avocado oil, which is a high heat oil. So I get some good searing and clarified butter, which doesn't burn like uh, regular butter. But, uh, oops, this is uh, very good. Very enjoyable for a uh, chuck. Chuck is usually known as a less tender cut mainly where you have to braise I think by uh, breaking it down into the different components uh, different muscles you could take advantage of uh, tender muscles versus uh, the whole whole uh, ch chuck roll as a whole also the underblade these steaks are rated as one of the top four or top seven depending on where you look at uh, most tender cuts of uh, muscles so i i'd agree with that it's uh, definitely a good eat a tender eat nice beefy flavor without uh, having a strong liver taste sometimes uh, when you cook meat beef it ends up having a liver taste liver livery minerally taste to it and I think that's more towards uh, the hind end muscles like the rump bros or uh, even the sirloin sometimes but I think Chuck the front end muscles forequarter seems to be a little more uh, resilient to the cook